Do you ever wonder how great leaders in the community make things happen? When they encounter new unexpected challenges like a pandemic, how do they continue to successfully make an impact? Welcome to That Sounds Terrific, the podcast that connects you with these amazing people. Get insights on what they do to meet their goals. Find out how you can help them in their mission and learn their methods so you can be more successful at what you do. Welcome to That Sounds Terrific with host Nick Koziel. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of That Sounds Terrific. I'm your host, Nick Koziel, and joining me today is Melissa Morsochi, president and owner of Cornerstone Healthcare Consulting and Management. She is a healthcare entrepreneur and a turnaround consultant. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it, Nick. So we're going to call you Missy because that's how I think you yeah. like to be called. Um, yep. But just in case people are looking for her on LinkedIn, you got to search for Melissa. Um, we'll have all of those links on the episode notes, of course. And why don't you just start out, Missy, by telling us a little bit about yourself and your career and kind of how you got where you are now and we'll sure. yeah. learn about you. Yeah. Um, well, you know, so I actually wanted to take the clinical route initially, and that's how I had begun in college. I started clinically and um, halfway through, I was shadowing in, in the ER and, and as well as the OR, and I just realized I didn't have the stomach for the clinical mm -hmm. side. I actually love medicine, like genuinely love medicine, and I didn't want to leave that industry. So I decided that, all right, how do you know how do I transition? And I was doing some things actually while I was in college um, as a volunteer and just identifying the fact that I was I seemed to have some good leadership skills and uh, business skills. I thought, well, they need people to run these places. So I switched right. to healthcare administration, and um, you know, so speed forward. Uh, so many years, and I really just kind of identify as a, a healthcare entrepreneur. Um, you know, when I was in college, I was like, I'm going to be the CEO of Strong Health. And it's so funny when I think about that, because it's not at all the route that I took, you know, and instead, actually, I really kind of seek to keep, you know, physician practices private, but, you know, and that's why I've really gotten into the turnaround consulting. Right. Um, so they're not selling their practice, like, no, we can, we can make you sustainable. It's all right. Um, and really trying to help uh, physicians identify, you know, what are their goals and how do we reach, how do we attain those goals for them? So it's kind of my story. That's awesome. And, you know, you touch on some things um, that, you know, I, I worked in a lot of different colleges and one of the colleges that I worked at had a vet tech program. And these students would come in already excited to be like, you know, I'm going to be working with cats and dogs and and um, they're super excited. And then they realize, you know, some of these cats are feral and you need like a suit to like pick them up. And, yeah. and like, the, you know, some of you are holding animals while, you know, they're being put down. And, and, and so these, these are the sides of, of, you know, medicine and veterinary sciences that you don't necessarily grow up listening to. And you're like, hey, I'm going to be a veterinarian, you know, or I'm going to be right. a vet tech. Yeah. And so for you to say what you said, like, I didn't have the stomach for it. And, and you know, I'm guessing there was a couple classes that, you know, involved, you um, some pretty, <laughs> you know, pretty interesting stuff. Um, I just remember well, talking, sorry, uh, no, you're good. one more thing. I just remember talking to my students and saying, hey, um, vet tech might not be for you, but yeah. you could be selling the equipment to veterinarians. You could be running the business. You, so there's a couple well, ways to still get in that. So you were yeah. going to say something and I, I was just yeah. No, you're good. I was actually shadowing in the ER and a gentleman came in. This was like my defining moment, like where I really started thinking like, uh oh, you know, um, he had been working on a table saw and it collapsed inward. So his thumbs went in mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they were gonna have to hurt him to help him. So I, I was like, geez, I want to help people, but I'm not very good at hurting them first. So, you know, I felt nauseous. Like I was like getting hot and I was like, okay, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it seems like everything you say is reminding me of stories from my past. There's a Weird Al Yankovic movie called UHF. It's a cult classic. And there's a part of it yeah. where they're showing uh, this guy and he's teaching you how to use a table saw and he ends up cutting off his thumb. And he goes, <laughs> would y'all look at that? And blood is like shooting out. And the cameraman's like eating a sandwich and passing out. And it was just <laughs> defining moment <laughs> in television yeah. industry. But I could see how that like, you know, would you know, gross some people out and for you know, sure. Yeah. I have a pretty strong stomach when it comes to that stuff. And I remember there's been quite a kind of number of times where I'm watching something on TV and like eating lunch and like my wife walks in and she's like, how can you be watching this? You know, alien <laughs> jumping out of a stomach and 
even like real surgery stuff that they do on the science channel. So you're good. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I, I had owned urgent cares, so, you know, I had a few in the Philadelphia region and a couple in New York. And so I had one of the providers in New York, I'd come in up front and there was a patient getting stitches and he looked at me and he says, if you're going to end up on the floor, <laughs> you need to go because I'm not going to treat you and her at the same time. So I'm like, yep. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not me, you know, like the whole father helping with the birth and cutting the cord and all that stuff. I was like, yeah, you know, so um, I lacked, yeah. I lacked the intelligence and maybe the dedication for becoming a doctor or something. Sure. That effect. Maybe sure. I would say dedication more than intelligence. I'm not, I just called myself dumb on my own show, but yeah, I was gonna say, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a sign of my intelligence right there. But um, so like, you know, that was a very quick overview of what you do, but can you talk a little bit about your service? Um, you kind of yeah, definitely. a little bit about, you know, yeah, so, um, the area. I'll talk about kind of like where I came from that led me to where I am. I was doing some healthcare consulting and, and management, and then I went into um, ownership and operation of urgent care centers. It, it was initially with a business partner and it was just kind of like a natural um, route everyone was taking at the time. So, um, you know, we've, live here in Western New York, but our first openings actually were in Philadelphia. Our first I like, kind of right. like, this is where we're gonna go. And then we found a couple other spots in New York. Um, learned a lot from it. Um, eventually we separated, separated amicably. And then I just took over one of the New York um, facilities. And it was great because it wasn't like urgent care that you may know now, you know, um, there's somewhat of a negative connotation with urgent care. And I respect that and understand that, but we didn't run it like that, you know? So instead it was really focusing on a high quality marketing, really putting the patient first and trying to do a, a, a well, just um, care connected model where we sublease space to um, different specialists. Uh, it began a really pretty robust occupational health program. They actually, and in addition to doing all their like physicals mm -hmm. and drug testing, we were able to really um, add that value like with the specialist on site. And um, we did telemedicine before telemedicine was a thing, right. you know. So I look back on that as kind of funny. I connected with, you know, a local college to telemedicine with their students, again, before telemedicine was a thing. And then I migrated out of um, urgent care. It gave me more flexibility and autonomy to go back into the healthcare consulting um, contract management role allows, let me have a little bit more of a balance um, being a, a single parent and um, having a young son. So I decided to go back into that. Um, with that, you know, initially a bit, one of my big things and continues to be a big niche was offering a uh, new practice uh, formation. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've, I've done it multiple times myself and helping others. So I have a, a great, um, like soup to nuts type um, solution, you know, it's full turnkey. And I really think the pendulum is going to swing, you know, so there's probably people listening and saying, wait a second, there's practices being bought left and right. Why are you thinking about trying to market that? Because this Gen Z population or rather generation is very entrepreneurial. It's also same with uh, millennials. So if we think that they are going to be satisfied working for a health system the rest of their lives, we're nuts, you know, unless they're a surgeon and need to be in the hospital or trauma or whatever, that's different. But as far as like, a, you know, being in the office, there's just no way. And you know what? The key is they shouldn't operate that practice the way practices have been operated the last 30 years. So I want to go in, work with them, get the right start and take them forward. Now on the flip of that, as I mentioned, you know, the way things were operated for 30 years, Another big area is turnaround consulting. So, you know, practice realizes that they, they're, maybe their reimbursement, they've dropped, their revenue also has dropped and they have the option of selling or finding to some solutions to say sustainable. So that's where they have called me to come in and, and fix um, their issues. I've actually had a client in Rochester where we reduced their annual expenses by $260,000 and it wasn't like a 30 provider practice. This was an eight provider practice. Right. So that is a sizable number. You know, it just, it really shows the fat that could really exist and how easily the eyes go off of that for mm -hmm. years. It just grows. Right. Um, off of that, you know, lots of, we, could just do, we can provide just about anything, but um, something as simple as credentialing, but um, business development and strategic planning are really big areas off of that as well. So 
Uh, where I'm going, I'm really trying to work with actually target uh, resident physicians right now, mm -hmm. uh, help them identify where they want to go in their career. So like getting ready for that pendulum swing and saying, hey, do you want to start a practice? And if so, like, what do you, you know, let's talk about that. What are your goals? So that's where I'm at now. Well, that's awesome. Um, you know, because, you know, when you go thinking about back about college and, you know, all the years of training that doctors have to go through, you know, sure. business and uh, other classes probably take a side burner if they get them at all. They do. Yeah. They say that all the time that they're like, wow, we were never taught this in medical school. Right. Because yep. you're concentrating on other probably more important things. Um, but yep. to go and try to go in to your own practice and, you know, I'm, I'm exploring different business options myself right now yep. So to try to understand like, you know, markets and like, you know, uh, expenses and how to run sure. an office and billing and all those things. Uh, it's very hard. And it's also very yeah. hard to identify the right people to yeah. hire to do that. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah. And manage them, you know, while right. also seeing patients and they actually, I'll regularly hear from physicians, like they feel guilty that they didn't take business courses and rather, I, I, I don't agree with that. I mean, you know, in business, we're taught, we're supposed to focus on what, what, what we do well. You know, there's this right. book called the E-Myth Method mm -hmm. that says that like, if you try to do everything, you're probably not going to grow and scale um, very successfully. So you have to do what you do well, and then bring in other people to help facilitate the other things. So um, in this scenario, I would say they, you know, creating a symbiotic relationship with someone like myself, you know, in, in my organization to help them do what they, they focus on what they do best and then right. bring in, you know, some, some backup for the rest. Yeah, that that's important. So, all right. So Dr. Dr. Smith comes to you and says, I have a problem. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to run the business end of this, this thing. How, what's the process that you take? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'll take you through like a turnaround situation. Like literally I will scrub everything. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll request an expense report and I want to go through all of their current expenses and usually actually look to see like certain, like certain vendors and right out of the gate, certain vendors, I just know I'm like, I know they're paying way too much money mm -hmm. and I'll be kind and I won't say their names, you know, right. but yeah, but you know, one in particular, I, I can give dollar scenarios. Um, it's something every office needs. Mm -hmm. um, and so when they have the one vendor, uh, I had, I'll give you a couple of, this has happened more than once in the Western New York region where sure. I've seen them pay a thousand dollars a month and I've got them down to $40 a month just so you get like that example, like it's just, an, it's insane. Um, I also will look at their organizational structure. I'll interview every member of their staff confidentially. You know, I, mm -hmm. I wanna hear from their staff and get an understanding of what they think is right and what is wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, usually uh, most practices are overstaffed and, and sadly, they're a lot of times inappropriately staffed. So, you know, right. they'll start, they'll have somebody that began as a receptionist or something and they've been with the practice let's just say for 10 years and the practice grows and they're like wow you know Jane is is really great she knows our our practice let's promote her to manager you're actually doing not just an injustice to your organization but also to Jane you know because right. she may not have the the tools in her toolbox to actually manage your practice especially with the intent of growing so I see that a lot and in those situations are really try to see if we can find a different seat on the bus for them because mm -hmm. we we'll, we'll really see their value still. Um, we'll look at also like technology, you know, it's not unusual where um, I'll see where they have a phone system that's over 20 years old. Yep. And you're like, guys, you know, that's a huge, huge part of efficiency, right. you know, um, then they're always surprised because then we can get data by uh, an advanced phone system and we can see how many calls they missed and they're like, oh, do you think it's the new phone system we're missing these calls? Like, no, <laughs> <laughs> you were missing those calls before. You just couldn't measure them. <laughs> you know? Yep. No, now you know. no, I mean, I remember pretty recently we have um, a dental office that was like actually buying physical file cabinets. And wow. so, um, I mean, I was within the last five years. So, but sure. yeah, I mean, things like that are a great cost, not only to, you know, time, but also to the environment. For sure. So, no, absolutely. 
it's good to have someone like you to kind of come in and say, hey, you know, here's something, a better way to do and keep organized. Now with everything going very app-based and trying to yes. get all those different systems to talk to one another, do you have yeah. like, I don't know, I don't want to say preferred partnerships, but do you have some go-to companies that you really like I do. know and trust? I um, do, yeah. That's one of the beauties of it, right? So um, I've been around the block. So I know like who's going to be uh, maybe not as as the goal in their relations with the practice and who is. So I've really um, built this dedicated network of who I immediately call on. And I'll, I'll say that has um, evolved at times. You know, there have been where maybe I wasn't satisfied. So I don't want them to feel like, well, she's only gonna go to them, you know? Yeah. If, if somebody's not um, servicing a client of mine, I'm absolutely gonna have to look for an alternative. You know, that really matters to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have some really great professionals that work alongside me. So, you know, from benefits to um, medical supplies, office supplies, um, literally, honestly, everything. It's just kind of funny, you know, when I think about it, because people are like, now just regularly call me in the business community, like, hey, do you have a contact for mm -hmm. <laughs> XYZ? I'm like, I do. <laughs> right. So you're a little bit of a networker when it comes to those types of yeah. services and trying to identify, like, you know, the premium. Um, for sure people. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, for sure. So one of the things that we talked about, like when we first met, um, was, you know, pra private practices. And sometimes when they're like mismanaged or, you know, are losing money or, or things like that, we end up having them kind of going out and trying to like sell their practice and then sort of reopen under this, like maybe franchise or, you know, different mm -hmm. name. Um, and we talked a lot about how that affects patients and, yeah. um, you know, some insurances uh, get removed and things like that. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, the sure. benefits of talking to you first, uh, yeah. Yeah, you definitely. know, before that happens? You know what I really want to preface that with is, so I hear this all the time from, from physicians, there'll be amongst the partners, at least one that's like, oh, we should look to see what the health system wants to offer us because they just have this thought that they're going to get paid millions you know, <laughs> for their practice. And I immediately halt them because what I have seen happen more than once is, uh, sadly, uh, health systems have their, their business, right? They have to operate like a business. So if you go desperately seeking um, an opportunity for them to buy you, they're not going to buy you. They're going to set up next door to you and they're just going to take your patients and let you die off, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I, that I would really like to definitely express that as caution, you know. Um, when they come, uh, I apologize, what was the question again? <laughs> so we were just talking about how, um, you know, instead of selling your practice or trying to move your practice to like a franchise model or something like that, talking to you pros about and options, pros and cons of that. Yeah. Um, you know, to me as a patient, I've been through that remodeling yeah, and yeah. the cost goes up and uh, some like one time our insurance was no longer covered you know just things like sure. that to kind of think about when you're a doctor and you're looking at for sure your practice i've definitely i've met with multiple physicians when they're exploring the option um when they're not quite sure yet if they want to uh continue being private or sell mm -hmm. and uh, one of the other things that I caution them about is I have never heard a positive story where when they sell that everything worked the way that they were promised. It's right. always the opposite that they're promised the world, but as soon as they sign, it's not that at all. It's right. usually actually a very negative experience. Um, and I, I'm really not trying to embellish that. Like that, that's just mm -hmm. really, I've never, ever heard a positive experience about a practice selling to a health system. Right. After that, I mean, all hell breaks loose for them because they no longer have control of their staff. So the, the health system will bring in a manager who's responsible for multiple practices, not just theirs. The staff become frustrated because there's all these changes and they, they don't see their manager, but maybe once a month. Um, a part of those changes that they want to talk about are their benefits. So right. um, I'll tell you, there's a local health system and I, I, to this day, it just baffles me, but they put outpatient clinics on the same benefit structure as the hospital. So where that's negative um, is Christmas day. It, of course, the practice is closed, but the hospital's not closed. Right. So it's not actually a holiday. So you have to take vacation time for that. Mm -hmm. And so I've heard that over and over again. Um, 
in the fact that you have to start over. So if they were at that practice, maybe they built up quite a bit of vacation, like, cause they've been there as they say, you know, 10 to 20 years. Now you're at the bottom again. Yeah. Um, so the staff are just completely frustrated from a patient perspective. And, and you're obviously, you're going to lose a lot of your staff because mm-hmm. they don't need billers. They have a billing department, you know, right. and I'm sure they recognize that, but just, to, you know, this, these are just realities that if, if we're having an honest conversation, we should present these things. They, you know, they don't need your manager, just things like that. Um, then on the um, patient side, I do hear that it's funny how patients have been catching on. So, um, you know, initially they're probably a little naive about the change, but I will hear regularly from patients where they'll say that they don't like their practice anymore, that they've right. been a, you know, a patient for years. Um, the customer service isn't the same. Or, or, and maybe the health system introduces new things that maybe aren't bad. It's just that patients aren't ready for it. So, um, for example, yeah. I heard of one where they put a kiosk in the waiting room. Mm-hmm. Sure, that's great, you know, but you can't depend on that 100%, especially if this has been like this family atmosphere practice, especially in a small town, just things like that. Those are dynamics that they need to understand. Yeah, if you have a lot so, of elderly patients, yeah, trying yeah, to fight with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. So there's some real cons to explore, you know, before taking that dive. Yeah, you know, and like I said, I've witnessed them myself a couple times, um, even, you know, in a previous place we lived where like, <laughs> I literally had a doctor's appointment like one week and then I had a follow up like two weeks later. And in that time they had switched over. And so you walked in, it was like fully renovated. They didn't really tell you that. Like, I think we got a letter or something. Hey, we're now, blah, 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 you know, and then you walked in (laughs) and you mentioned the kiosk and that, and that, that was one of the things that I remember was kind of like, everything was, you have to electronically sign in and, and like half the people that I knew were gone and you just didn't know. And it made me think, you know, at the time, not as seriously yeah. as we're having this conversation, but I'm like, huh, I wonder where Amy went or, you know, whoever. <laughs> um, so. Amy is now on unemployment. <laughs> right. And, and that's the thing I think, you know, that I, uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up during our conversation was just to caution some of those um, practitioners that are thinking about going, you know, to the more corporate or, you know, um, corporate way because yeah you're sort of setting and forgetting like now I don't have to worry about this anymore but what you you're yeah. creating a whole new can of worms to worry about that you have a lot less control over and for sure so, you know yeah. getting that sales from like what you were saying so talking to to that company that's going to take over your practice um they're literally going to take over your practice and they're going to make it sound like awesome yeah. but you're yeah. going to have much more of a limited thing um you know uh, limited control over how you can, sure. you know, change. If at all. And, you know, I would say I should be fair too, is like, could there be some positives on depending on the situation? Sure. Mm-hmm. You want to retire in a year, you know, you want to mm-hmm. retire now. It, it could be an option, you know, at that point. Yeah. It won't be perfect. Right. Nothing's perfect. And I'm not sure if this is related or not, and maybe you can you can answer this question. But the other thing that I've noticed when some of these changes have happened is that all of a sudden the 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 um the doctor's gone. You got you got a million PAs coming in and cycling yeah. through. You never see them again. Um, you know the same person twice, um, and they definitely miss things because of it. Because mm-hmm. everyone has a different note style, even though it's supposed to be uniform. You know. Yeah. So that is because with the health system, they have, uh, for lack of better words, a quota. So that's how there's, they have to see so many patients uh, within a certain time frame. If they don't meet that, then that's going to impact their income. So yes, yeah. um, that's where certain providers all like will always know that they could never fit that model because they want to be more personable with, with the patient. They want to have the time with the patient. So yes, that's a big piece of that. And uh, your advanced practice providers, you know, so your PAs and your NPs, they're the money makers. Yeah, they, um, they are, they're half the cost and they're, you know, 80% of the reimbursement, but um, if they're half the cost, the math works, right? So they're at least half the cost, if not more, it just depends on the specialty. 
yeah that well that makes sense because they don't have as much of the education and as much of an experience and expertise per se you know although i i have (laughs) i have listened to some nurses and their advice on on certain things that like seem to almost contradict the doctor but um they know what they're talking about too a lot of the times so it's interesting because one of the other things and this is maybe is i don't know the real statistic but i had heard this through uh, an insurance company that was talking about our benefits. And um, they had said that there's a real shortage on um, family practitioners. Mm-hmm. It's not yes. the, the quote unquote sexy uh, thing to go yeah. into. You want to be a specialist of something when you're leaving medical school. Yeah. yeah. So all of these things sort of seemingly add up to, you know, having, you know, more and more issues um, within For some sure. of these practices. So um do you have like a list like on your website or 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 people that you've helped in the past that you kind of share or you know here are some of the recommended practices that you know you've helped in the past for sure yeah so um yes on my website there there are some uh list of practices that i've helped um one of the things too is uh invariably i always actually build such great friendships with them you know so these are people that i even stay in contact with um, in Rochester, you know, Penfield, OBGYN, English Road Pediatrics, um, Buffalo, uh, uh, I, let's see, UBMD, mm-hmm. um, Empire OBGYN, um, Maine Pediatrics. I opened Cedar Pediatrics and uh, Trinity Pediatrics, not affiliated with Catholic Health, just, mm-hmm. she just like that name. Um, yeah, opened Three mm-hmm. Little Birds Pediatrics in Batavia. Awesome. So it's quite a, it's quite a, a lengthy list. So yeah. um, I just, I bring that up just in case people are looking for, you know, new practitioner or somebody, you know, that they can trust. Yeah. And um, since you're, you're an expert in this field, I want people to be aware of people that you've helped in the past. And that's great to hear that you stay connected too. Oh yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. So I, I would imagine that a lot of your services is, is sort of word of mouth networking referral. Uh, yeah. Based. Yeah. So actually it's been exclusively that. Um, so I am trying to do better that way, you mm-hmm. know, as I have a good friend that's a marketing uh, firm owner and he's harping on me. So <laughs> I'm working on that <laughs> right now. And uh, actually um, I, I'm getting my logo updated and um, we're going to redo the website again. Um, awesome. Yeah, so all these things that I'm trying to do better. I'm really great at helping others, but it's just like the mechanics have the worst cars, you know. <laughs> That's this guy. So this guy has lots of great advice on social media and marketing and, and what to do and what not to do and how to, you know, post consistently and provide lots of content. But does he do it? No. So I'm getting a lot better at that. <laughs> I'm getting a lot better at that. So Nice. Um, but yeah. it's, you know, it's good also to be sort of humbled and, and, you know, get advice from, from other for people sure. and consult oh, it. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. you, same thing sort of goes for you, right? There are yeah. things that, you know, you can definitely wear the hat for, but things that you also need to maybe hire oh, account yeah. for. So yeah. um, we'd be hypocrites if we weren't doing that, right? For sure. Um, yeah. But I, I like, I really think that, you know, what you're doing, you know, is a terrific service to the community. Thank you. Because- Again, you're keeping high quality, you know, healthcare uh, accessible. And in yeah. this yeah. like time, probably even more than ever, that's really important um, For sure. to have, mm-hmm. you know, specific practices um, that are at a high, serving high quality, um, you know, patients. So, or Definitely. providers. But <laughs> um, is there anything that, you know, I didn't ask in, in the interview that, you definitely want to make sure our listeners are aware of. No, I think actually it's been a really good, valuable conversation. Yeah. Okay. That's a yeah. stumper question. I either get, yes, you totally missed this or. <laughs> um, You're like, come on, Nick. <laughs> no, but I want to make sure that I got everything out there that you want to get out there. Um, For sure. Missy, yeah, thank you. Missy, it's been absolutely terrific getting to know you a little bit better. And uh, I like appreciate this. you sharing um, your service. Uh, like I said, I'll have your contact information in the show notes. Um, I h- highly urge any practitioner or any health service person that's looking for um, help in, you know, managing their practice or, you know, looking at the options and even some small things I'm sure you'll, you'll take care of Absolutely. just like payroll or human resources options. Yep. For sure. So, yeah. 
reach out to Missy and thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for joining us in another episode of That Sounds Terrific. Don't forget to check out the show notes and our website at thatsoundsterrific.com to find the contact information and the best ways to volunteer with the organizations that we feature. If you know someone that is doing terrific things and think they should be featured in a future episode, be sure to email us their name, contact info, and short description of what they're doing at thatsoundsterrific at gmail.com. If you like our show, give us a five-star rating and give us some social media love by liking our Facebook page, That Sounds Terrific. Follow us on Twitter at Sounds Terrific 2 and Instagram at Sounds Terrific. We love hearing your feedback on how to make our show sound even more terrific. Till next time.